Now that we've introduced the velocity potential, it's time to talk about some of its properties and um, how we're going to tackle um, potential flow problems. <coughs> now certainly you can always solve for del squared phi equal to zero with boundary conditions. Uh, however, what we will be discussing in this class um, is a little bit simpler than that. and. Um, one of the first properties that will enable us to do this is superposition uh, or linearity superposition. So now del squared phi is a linear operator. What does that mean? If we find, assume that somehow we have a few potential flows like uniform flow and then the irrotational vortex, okay, and maybe another flow with a source, etc. And if for each one of those flows we find the potential flow solution, so if phi1 satisfies del squared phi1 equals 0, phi2 satisfies del squared phi2 equals 0, and phi3 satisfies del squared phi3 equals 0, and so on, then phi, which is equal to a phi 1 plus some constant phi b phi 2 plus some constant c phi 3, etc., plus some constant d, satisfies del squared phi equal to 0. In other words, if phi 1, phi 2, and phi 3 are potential flow solutions, then their combination, any linear combination thereof, is also a potential flow solution. Now, this is really great because this allows us to come up with a few building blocks like uniform flow, um, source flow, vortex flow, and then combine them in ways that will produce flows that could mimic um, realistic flows um, in principle. And that's a very powerful principle um, for the for potential flow theory. That's why it's um, kind of so, so popular. If we limit ourselves to two dimensions, then we can use the stream function two as well. The interesting thing about phi, which is called the potential, velocity potential, is that it's not aligned with the flow, rather it's perpendicular to the flow because u is grad phi, phi. Now when you think about drawing a flow field, for example, if I'm asking you to draw the flow in this channel, what you would typically draw and what any person would draw are kind of streamlines, right? Where these, there are values for psi over here, one, two, three, four, etc. However, how would you draw the velocity potential? Um, turns out that the velocity potential in two dimensions is perpendicular to, um, to the stream function. So phi1, phi2, phi3, and so on. That's what it looks like. Okay, And we can see this when we look at the definition of the stream function and the velocity potential. So Remember, u is grad phi, and for a 2D, take Cartesian situation, for example, Cartesian coordinates, u is d phi by dx, and that's equal to d psi by dy, and v is equal to d phi by dy, and that's equal to minus d psi by dx. Um, we call psi... Um, C uh, constant streamlines, constant along streamlines, streamlines, that's why it's called the um, stream function, and phi, we call that the, um, it produces lines of equipotential lines, lines of potential but in 2d and that's only in 2d okay in 2d phi is perpendicular to psi and you can show this um, very easily by showing that the product of the um, 
um, the product of the slopes of these of two lines of a streamline and a potential line uh, is equal to minus one. If you remember, um, two lines are perpendicular. Two lines are perpendicular if their if the product of their slopes is equal to minus one. So if you have ax plus b and th cx plus d, they are perpendicular if a times c is equal to minus one. Okay, so now we can take a, um, a streamline and a uh, equipotential line. And so notice that d phi for the stream for the potential flow is for the potential for the velocity potential d phi by dx dx plus d phi by dy dy and that's equal to u dx plus v dy now along an equipotential line that's equal to zero so that gives us that dy by dx is equal to minus u over v that's kind of the slope of the line and deep C, which is equal to zero along a streamline, that's equal to deep C by dx dx plus deep C by dy dy. And that's equal to v dx um, or minus v dx plus u dy, that's equal to zero. So this implies for the stream function, um, dy by dx is equal to v over u. So this is for phi and this is for psi, dy by the slope for psi and the slope for phi along a streamline. And therefore, when you combine these two, um, dy by dx, the slope of um, phi times dy by dx, the slope for psi, that's equal to minus u over v times v over u, that's equal to minus one. And so if you think of it this way, you have the streamline going on like this, or at a given point, you have uh, the u vector, u velocity, and then the velocity potential is going to be perpendicular to that um, at that point. But that only happens in 2D. We'll see a case where um, we'll discuss the case uh, for axisymmetric flow um, where it's really not, not two dimensions, um, where